Take a look at this helicopter video moving over Fort Myers Beach. Look at each and every building as it passes. Some badly damaged, missing rooftops, and now the structural integrity is in question. The remake will take years. Florida Power and Light says its system needs to be rebuilt, not restored. Tonight, we found more Louisvillians who once lived here but are now living in the hurricane zone of Florida. WHS 11 I teams Ford Sanders is here at Ford. You talk to one woman. What do they need right now? Yeah, Barbara Kehoe says she was raised. She actually was raised and lived here in Louisville for years, moving to the St. Petersburg, Florida area 11 years ago. Now her family fared pretty well through the storms. However, she says now access to power and other necessities is what many are needing. These are the kind of branches that we get kind of down. Down trees, brush and other debris. It's what seems minor now for Barbara Kehoe and her family, but she says the last couple of days have been no walk in the park. This time, you know, we were really worried. We didn't know what was going to happen. We were watching it to see if we were going to need to evacuate. Barbara grew up in Louisville, leaving 11 years ago to head to Florida for work. She says seeing crews coming down from Kentuckyana is special due to her close connection to LG&E and their crews. It is really special to me because my dad worked for LG&E for his, his entire work career. He retired from there. LG&E reps tell me they have around 200 contracted and full-time employees heading down to coastal states as we speak. Linemen like Eric Chumley from all over Kentucky also making their way and preparing to help. Sometimes it's a hurricane, sometimes it's a tornado outbreak. Uh, it's just a really rewarding feeling to be able to go and help uh, bring a little bit of light back to uh, to those people's situation. Other linemen like Richard Steele with Clark Energy of Central Kentucky says this relationship is mutual. You know, when Florida gets hit with the tropical storms or big storms like that, we go down there and help them. When we get the ice storms and snow storms, they come up here and help us. For Kehoe, she says this help is needed as winds are still strong and power is scarce. You can kind of see the electrical lines running through there. Um, those wires were bouncing off that tree for several hours, sparking like green and blue and every other color. Saying she's praying for her friends in the Carolinas as Hurricane Ian heads their way. Ian's coming your way. He's not a good guest. He's loud, he's messy. You're not gonna like him and he stays too long. And Barbara says her daughter is in Orlando. It's starting to experience some of that flooding. She sent some pictures earlier saying that also her friends in Charleston, South Carolina, are preparing themselves as the storm approaches. I think you said around 2 p.m. tomorrow, Doug. That's should right. Hit around there. So, so many connections to this region, to not only to Florida, but to Charleston. Now, about LG&E, you know, we saw them leaving here yesterday. What's their status right now? What's the location of those crews? Yeah, I actually talked to them on the phone. They tell me that they're going to be stuck in Georgia. They are stuck in Georgia right now due to those storms ahead on their route, but they should now be rolling into the Carolinas any minute to start their work there as well as help where needed. Now, Barbara tells me one of the issues that they're facing right now is the wind that's still happening. Those bucket trucks to get workers up to those poles and really restore those power lines. It's just not possible right now, so it's all a waiting game.